the depth of field entry in Photoshop Elements 10 in the Lens Effects section of the Guided Edit Panel enables us to control how much and what parts of our images are sharp. So if we have a look at this photo here where we've got a cute hat and jacket sitting on a coat rack, it's not exactly how I wanted it to appear when I was first shooting this. What I was looking for was just to have the coat and the jacket sharp and the other parts of the coat rack to just give an indication of what's in the scene, so it'd be a little more blurry. Now that it's photographed, changing what parts of the image are sharp and what parts are blurry can be a difficult task, but not with this guided edit effect. So let's just click on the depth of field entry. And what you'll see is that we have two different approaches here, and I'll go through both of them so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. The first is just simple, so let's go and select that. And as with all guided edits, we have a series of steps, and we have our tools embedded in those steps. So the first thing we want to do is just click the Add Blur button, and you'll see automatically the blur is added to all of the image. But don't panic, because now we get to control that. So we'll go down to the second step, and we select the Gradient tool in that step, and just click in the center of the area that we want to remain sharp and drag out the line to the edge of the area that we want to be sharp and then just let go. And you'll see that we now have a graded sharpness effect from sharpness in the very center of the area that we first clicked right the way out to full blur. If we wish to increase the blur effect, well then we can do that using the blur slider that you see here. So by dragging it right up, you'll see that this area of the scene is completely blurred. But the area just around the hat and the top of the coat is still sharp. So we have control over where the blur goes and how much that part of the image is blurred. Let's cancel out of that, go back to the original image, and re-enter the depth of field entry, and then just click on Custom to show you the second way of actually building some blur into our photo. Again, we start with the first step, and in this case, what we're going to do is select the items in our image that we wish to remain sharp. So I'll click on the Quick Selection tool, and here's a little hint. For better quick selections, just go up to the Options bar that you can see here, and select Auto Enhance. This will help the tool snap to the edge of your objects. So you can see here I'm going around the actual jacket itself, and it's snapped just to the jacket. Then I'm going to move over to the hat, and using the cursor again, I'm going to go around the hat, and it's snapped to just the hat. We've also got part of the coat rack just here. If I hold down the Alt or Opt key, then you'll notice that the, the cursor changes to a brush tip with a minus sign in the center. So then I can move back over that part of the coat rack and remove it, and then just take my fingers off the Alt or Opt key and just bring in the extra little bit of the hat there. So now that we're happy with the result of just selecting those parts of the image, let's go down to the next step where we click Add Blur and the rest of the image is now blurred with those areas remaining sharp. Go down a little bit further and increase the blur effect. So you can see here that just the hat and just the coat have remained sharp and the rest of the image has been blurred. If I now click Done and we go back into the main editing space and just click on Full so that we can actually see what's happened to our image. You'll see here that we have added the blur in a separate layer. Because it's been added in with a layer mask that you can see here, we can edit that layer mask as well. So you can go and select a brush tool Make sure that the foreground color is set to white. And then with that brush tool, and I'll just make the brush tip a little bit bigger using the right square bracket, I can go and make sure that the layer mask is selected in my layers palette. You can see now it has a white border around it. And then with white as my foreground color, I can go and brush sharpness back into the image. So once the original layer mask has been created, and the blur effect has been created, you can come and customize that effect using a brush. If we change the opacity of the brush, we change the amount of blur that is left showing through. So some very powerful changes that you can do very quickly and very easily using the new guided edit feature.